It's Chelsea Messenger with picks and parlays. It's been a really fun football season. Just wrapping it up with a nice little Super Bowl. A little bit boring to watch, but obviously the storyline was there with Tampa Bay. Tom Brady winning another Super Bowl, but it's never too early to start looking at the next season. And we'll be looking at some long shot odds to win the next year's Super Bowl and what teams we think might be contenders because you know that these uh, sports books already have odds on it. We've got a promo code. The code is LOVE for 20% off the entire site at picksandparlays.net. The Chiefs are actually the odds on favorite to win in next year's Super Bowl uh, at plus 500, plus 550 in some spots. We've got Scott Rickenbach joining us, who was the number one capper on picksandparlays.net uh, for last year. So always some good insight from Scott. Scott, uh, initial thoughts on some of these odds to win it all. Thanks, Chelsea. So the first thing is uh, talking about the two teams that were just in it, and this is fresh in everybody's mind, but one comment I have to make is it's a shame that certainly uh, Tampa Bay earned that win, but they got a big uh, head start with the officiating, in my opinion, in the first half. I mean, when it's talked about with the commentators throughout halftime, that was the I mean, when they're willing to talk about it through the entire uh, little halftime segment they had there, it tells you how, how questionable the officiating was. So anyway, just want to. it's a shame when it disappoints in a big game like that and it gave the Bucs, uh, they earned it again, but they got a big lead and then it made it a pretty, like you said, boring Super Bowl. But let's talk about those two teams for a minute because I think first off, the Chiefs are going to come back really hungry. I don't think Mahomes, he sure didn't look 100% in that game. Uh, you know, that's the thing with these futures odds, anything can happen. But I mean, when you have the coaching staff that KC has and all the weapons that they have on offense, again, it didn't play out in the Super Bowl uh, this year, but that's the type of team that, of course, they were the Super Bowl winners the year before. They can come back and do it again. And you know that Mahomes is going to be hungrier than ever and the rest of that team going to be gung-ho. That's actually my pick for, uh, and again, that one's not a long shot, but I've got a, bi a bigger odds one to look at. But I would have to say right now that early on, my lean is toward Kansas City to come back and win the Super Bowl. They're going to be so hungry after the disappointment of the way this year ended. Now, as for Tampa Bay, I want, just want to mention their odds are 10 to 1. I A lot of people will probably really strongly disagree with this, but I would never put a wager on Tampa Bay to win again this coming year. And part of the reason is because no team has done that since I think it was 03, 04. So it's been over 15 years. It's so hard to do it. A lot of things, you know, have to fall into place and click for you. And I think Tampa Bay had some good fortune to win it all uh, this year. But another team I want to talk about is Green Bay, 9-1 to one odds. And the reason I'm mentioning the Packers is because one of the things you have to look at here, think about the Rams. They play in a division with the Seahawks. Uh, the Cardinals can be tough. The thing is, the Packers, they're going to be in that NFC North division with Minnesota, who just hasn't been the same recently, the Bears, who are, are down and not even sure who their quarterback's going to be for this coming year, um, and then, of course, the Lions, who are always miserable. So the Packers, when you have a team that has a good shot to win their division, and you know they got the home field this year and it didn't quite pan out for them, but I think they're going to be back in the mix again, and that would actually be my pick coming out of the NFC and they're at nine to one. But one other team I want to talk about, and it's uh, not huge long shot odds, but it's still a bit of a long shot. Here's a team that hasn't been to the Super Bowl since 94. But the Buffalo Bills give them a lot of credit, and they gained a lot of experience in this year's postseason. That's going to go a long way for this team. And then when you've got a quarterback like Josh Allen that can get it done, I think they've got the right mix. Of course, they're you know, again, not quite on the level of a Kansas City yet, but the point is they could they can get that upset win over a good team and make it to the Super Bowl. And then when you've got 12 to 1 odds, I mean, I would definitely look at the Bills as a long shot pick for this uh, coming Super Bowl. Yeah, I had the Bills for a futures ticket this season, so I would have very much enjoyed to see them win it all. And I think the AFC is going to be a fun one because uh, even before the Super Bowl, even this postseason, it was kind of a lot of young and up and coming quarterbacks. And when we're talking about futures, you've got to monitor the changes in the roster uh, when it comes to the upcoming year. And of course, we've got some big name quarterbacks who are switching teams that could greatly alter the chances of some of these teams. So uh, is there any other team that you're looking at or anything else you think there should know when it comes to placing futures bets? Because I know we've got Deshaun Watson uh, available for some team to pick up. And then we were talking about Carson Wentz before the show, even though I don't know how much of an upgrade that would be. Uh, for some teams. Uh, so what are some other things you think people should look at? 
I think you absolutely have to consider that as, as one of the keys is especially those big key players like the QB position, of course, so important in the NFL. And I have heard rumors of Carson Wentz. Uh, originally, I thought he was going to go to the Colts, but now I'm hearing that he's going to go to the Bears uh, was, was the most recent thing I was hearing. And then I was also hearing that the Eagles might get Stafford in some kind of a package deal involving a, multiple teams where Stafford, who has gone to the Rams, would now actually end up going to the Eagles. So all kinds of rumors at this point. But the other thing I would point out um, is to keep an eye on coaching changes too, not just the head coaches. What I'm talking about is when teams, when they get a new coordinator that can click with that team's, you know, if, if just say you've got a quarterback that will work well in a certain type of offensive attack, but he wasn't doing so well under the current regime, and then they make a change at offensive coordinator, sometimes that can really click for a team. So when you're talking about a team that's like right on the cusp, if they're on the edge of being one of those elite teams, and then they make some key coaching staff changes, that goes a little bit more unnoticed, but yet it can provide some good value because, I mean, let's face it, coaching is a big key, and yet you don't hear – be people talking about it in the same way as you know the running backs and wide receivers and quarterbacks but the thing is coaching is big in the nfl and one other comment too that i just want to mention it's a little harder to gauge the exact value of this but keep an eye on the trenches too the offensive line defensive line people don't estimate you know the importance of that enough but even look at uh, kansas city in the super bowl you know they were without a couple tackles on the offensive line and mahomes was running for his life all night long now, the point being that if you have a solid offensive line and healthy, of course, we can't predict the health, but I'm saying just keep an eye on that kind of player movement too, because if a team really solidifies itself in the trenches, to me, that's always a big key to winning in football. It's, it's, it doesn't get as much attention, but those battles in the trenches mean so much to how a team's going to perform on both sides of the ball. Oh, for sure. And that's kind of why I like the Colts next season, just because they were such a complete team this past season, uh, not the flashiest of team team and really couldn't compete with those really high scoring offenses, in my opinion. But I think if they do make a change at quarterback, which they're expected to do, obviously, uh, Philip Rivers isn't going to be there. So um, I think that's a team for me that I think should be on people's watch list. But that's going to do it for our video right now. We're going to wrap it up here at Picks and Parlays. Great stuff from Scott Rickenbach. As always, Scott, thanks for joining us.